my question relates to uh, your time as a journalist and the workings of the media. This is something that baffles us as Muslim, and I'd like you to shed some light on this, working both from the inside as well as looking at it from the outside now. Uh, one of the uh, things that I would like to understand is what are the sentiments of journalists and what are the sentiments of the media people when they report on issues that relate to Muslims and Islam? And I'd like you to shed some light on that. And I'd just like to highlight a comment that I picked up the other day in the New Zealand Herald. It was, there was a comment that came from some expert who was talking about how to spot a terrorist in a neighborhood or something to that effect. And the comment that was relayed or written down, it said, there are three, people in, there are three groups of people in Europe that you can identify as terrorists coming from the Muslim community. The first one is immigrants. Second one is second generation Muslim. And the third one are converts. I'm not sure what that leaves for the rest of the people, but I mean, you fall in one of the groups. So my question is, uh, now, how do these comments get through the editorial process? And what are the sentiments of the media and the people working in the media when they do write things like this? It's very easy to spot a terrorist. There were eight of them in Scotland the other week at the G8. One of them lives in the White House, another one lives in Downing Street. And the biggest terrorist, the biggest war criminal, is in Israel. He's called Ariel Sharon. As a journalist, I would love just to scrap the word terrorist. It is meaningless. Nelson Mandela, one of the most revered statesmen in the world, was called a terrorist by Margaret Thatcher. If you ask an Afghan farmer what is a terrorist, he'll tell you it was the guy who flew over his land and in a B-52 bomber and dropped bombs that are still exploding, exploding, killing and maiming today. If you ask a Palestinian child what is a terrorist, she'll tell you it's the Palestinian soldier who killed her sister. If you ask a Chechnyan what is a terrorist, he will tell you it is Putin who is using the war on terror to slaughter the Chechnyans. We all have different definitions of terrorists. I would completely as a journalist like to ban the word. And as for journalists, these are very troubled times. And finding good journalists is very, very difficult. But there are a few. And what I would say to you all is to go onto the internet and find them and learn to trust your sources and try and seek corroboration. The media has done a great disservice to the Muslim community around the globe. Part of it is due to ignorance and part of it is due to an Islamophobic attitude by some of the newspaper publishers. And while we're on the subject, I would just like to address the agenda program on Sunday, which featured a Muslim who said that our universities in New Zealand are in the hands of Muslim radicals that have become breeding grounds for Muslim radicals. He was talking absolute, complete nonsense, and this is one of the most disgraceful pieces of journalism I have seen since I've been here. There is no corroboration to his story. He has an ax to grind. He's a very unhappy young man. And um, what he said was completely untrue. I have been to Auckland University today and more or less said that. We are living in very dangerous times and we have to be careful to be able to disseminate what is true and what is not. And we have to be very, very wary of the siren calls. And what I would say to Winston Peters is 
There's a village in New Zealand looking for its idiot. You'd better go home, mister. Uh, thank you, um, Yvonne. If you look back on the history, in 20 years back, we used to see the capitalist power and the socialist power, which is held by the American and the Russians. And but somehow, the socialist power was empowered by the capitalists. Can we say that now what's happening now is the Islam become a replacement of the socialist power? I think that um, America is the type of country that has to have some sort of enemy. And I was looking into America's history for a paper I was writing a few weeks ago. And America has been at war either internally or internationally every single year since its inception with the exception of 1892. Now, I don't know what happened in 1892, other than that was the year my favorite soccer team, Newcastle United, was formed. But America is a warry nation, and it has to have an enemy. At first, it was the indigenous population, the real Americans, the Indians. Then it started on the Mexicans. Then it went land grabbing round California. Then it got involved in the Civil War and it has continued. And for the last 50 years, it has been at war every single year, bombing more than 20 different countries. This is not a peaceful nation. It has to have an enemy. Communism has gone and it has been, I feel, replaced by Islam. Islam is an easy target for the um, American administration, and it's very easy to whip up hysteria and hate against the Muslim community. And we really have to stick together and be united on this. And I'm not just talking to the Muslims, I'm talking to everybody, because once America has finished with the Muslims, it could turn on anybody next. You know, it could be you. So, you know, these are, are very dangerous days. And that's why I would urge you to be very careful when you see big scare headlines demonizing the Muslim community. I'm actually come along tonight and I first of all want to thank you for your heart-wrenching story that you've told tonight. We were invited tonight and myself and two other colleagues from the Māori party and I need to say please don't judge all Māoris by Winston Peters. He does not represent us. Living Sorry. Living in this country, we have lived here for thousands of years. It has taken us 165 years to finally get to the point where we are just a minority in our own country. Our leaders today, in fact, Tariana Turia said that the claims by Mr Peters is political posturing at its very worst. We are the party that is coming out for all minority groups and saying, come with us, come with the tangata whenua, because we have been here for thousands of years. I challenge you, I ask you, I beg you, come to a marae, come and meet our leaders who disagree also with what these politicians are doing, the things that they are saying. You said at the end of your, your speech there about how safe it is here. What we need to tell you is that there are some unsafe things happening here as well. And not to put the fear, but to say, all these minority groups, we have to come together. We really do. We have two major parties out there, but we have minority groups if we only come together. Because I can tell you, my leaders, Dr. Peter Sharples and Tariana Turia, share your views. 
That is why they go out into the newspapers and they say, we support the Muslim community here in New Zealand. Kia ora.